Hey, 360 Electricians, welcome back to the 360 Electrician Podcast. Now, if you've listened to this podcast, first of all, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Don't forget that you can also watch it on YouTube at the 360 Electrician. Well, you know, I always promise you to level up this podcast and try to bring you bigger and better guests in all forms of the electrical business. And this week has just been really tough because you know we're on the series of the greatest, the best, the most incredible women of the trade. Samantha from Nika was on the show last week, but to be honest with you, it's been a little bit hard to find somebody that I can book. And so I think I'm gonna have to reach out to a good friend. She should be joining us to give us a little bit of advice. And there she is, Lexi, how are you? Good, how are you, Jeff? Good, Lexi. You know, I sent you that email and I said, I'm I'm really having this hard time to find the real deal, a rock star in our trade, a female as well. And you promised you would help me. Did you have any luck trying to find someone for me? I reached out to everybody this week. Everybody is booked. I don't, I don't know. Oh, man. It's not this... looking good. It's not looking good. Yeah, Lexi, I'm going to have to call in a big favor. I'm going to have to call in. Can you, can you just do this podcast with me? This just this once, I promise. Me? Yes. Yeah, sure. I sure. mean, Let's do it. Let's do it. I can't book anybody else. Let's if I can it. book you, I mean, I think a few people, maybe a few hundred thousand, maybe a million people might be interested if you come Let's, on. Would you do that for me? Do Let's do it. I'm Great. Down. Well, then, you guys, welcome to the 360 Electrician Podcast with the one and only Lexi. Let's get into the podcast. Hey, Lexi. Thank you for being on the podcast. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me, Jeff. I just got out of work, so if I look a little <laughs> Yes, you did. What and and for, the truth is, if all of you are listening, you are, yeah, she's really here. I know uh, a lot of you are like, how the heck did Jeff get Lexi booked? And we'll talk about that <laughs> later. But Lexi is the real deal. You know, I knew nothing about you, Lexi, except watching your videos. And you can kind of know a lot, obviously, from watching them. But Lexi, I don't think you've ever done a podcast before, have you? I get a lot well, of emails, but I don't really have a lot of time to respond. Well, to <laughs> I'm super Super honored and, uh, you know, don't cash that $100,000 check until after the podcast at least, okay? So, uh, I no, oh, I'm just... Shit, let me call somebody. <laughs> I am honored and like everybody, uh, I always say no, I did not pay Lexi to be here, but sponsors yeah. out there, she is for hire. I'm going to try to manage her from now on. I'm just kidding. But yes, Lexi, you're like a rock star now and I know I'm going to flatter you, but that's my job. You can say no, 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 all you want, but it's true. I think you have the record now for the, the most amount of subscribers and probably the biggest influence on YouTube. So you know I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about that. But the most important questions I'm going to ask are stuff that we don't get to see about you. And you have been gracious enough, and I'm going to let it out there. Guys, girls, you're listening to this. Lexi said there was nothing that wasn't on the table, so I really appreciate that. That being said, I'm not going to go anywhere that's off the table itself. First and foremost, I want to get this out of the way. How do you pronounce the last name? Technically, it's Abreu, but everybody says Abreu, so we're going to go with Abreu here. I grew up Goldalian, and when people say Godalian, Schmedalian, whatever, I always used to say, wow, you said it so good so that I could just move on with my life. That's what so we're doing. obviously, I've heard the Spanish, and what nationality is that? What's your background? Uh, I am Puerto Rican and Irish. That explains the uh, don't mess with me, but yet I look good no matter what I do, right? Is that kind of a good combination to put it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. And so uh, out of the brief conversations that we had leading up to this, and I do want to let everybody know how this happened because it's just nothing happens on accident. I'm super blessed with this podcast, my businesses, even my humble little YouTube channel. But how did you get into the trade? Because when you told me, I was like, wow, that's pretty crazy. So tell me first and foremost, how does Lexi first get into the trade? Because I'm going to ask you how you even got into social and how that even happened but what's your background um so it's a crazy story but i never even wanted to be an electrician necessarily especially when i was younger it just wasn't like my thing i am a third generation electrician so my entire family is electricians but i definitely was fighting not to be an electrician initially i just didn't know what was involved but i was a personal trainer I did med school, I was a bartender, I was all over the place, but eventually I got my feet into electrical and then uh, I didn't stop. And now here I am. <laughs> my, wow. dad, my dad's an electrician, my uncles are electricians, and my brother just became an apprentice. So this is this is officially, you can't mess with Lexi. So some people can mess with me. I did trade school and everything, but I don't have generations of electricians in me. I mean, nobody can really mess with you. That's why I said you're the real deal. It runs into your blood. I don't think anybody really knew that. Have you said that anywhere or is there any? No, I mean, I did a small video um, at one point, taught, like basically touching on it, but it's not something that I share all the time because a lot of people are like, oh, you just like got lucky because your family's in it. But Absolutely. I am a third generation electrician. Wow. 
Wow, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Well, thank you to your your family members, obviously. Your content, the way you put yourself out there, the type of work you do, you've heard me say it before and I've said it on the channel so I can say it. I'm not just trying to you know, put it because it's on the podcast. I always joke and I say, I have a training video at my shop and it's you, you doing some of your work. And I said, if you can do that, you're hired. I mean, that's it. Do I need to train you anymore? Do I need to say, no, I can't do that. Okay, well, move along. But it, it's kind of <laughs> true. I think a lot of people appreciate that. And of course, we attribute it to your growth and your success and everything social media. I wanted to get into that. So your brother is your apprentice. And so when I see some of your videos, I've seen your brother in there and me not knowing anything about you at first, I told you ignorance on my part. Like, do you work for that guy? Right. But you're like, no, that's my brother. He's my apprentice. I'm like, dang, he's got a great <laughs> trainer, right? So he's going to, he's going to level up that way. But uh, you do work for a company. And so obviously we don't want to get too much into that, but, but your boss obviously knows you're a rock star. You're okay. He's okay with you doing the videos and all that good stuff. Yeah, 90% of the time, nobody even knows I'm recording. I am really good at just hiding it in general. Um, right. I'm very discreet about it. But when they did start to notice, they only started to notice because I started getting these sponsorships and these crazy packages with stuff in them for the company. So we don't pay like, you enough for that $7,000. No, just kidding. <laughs> crazy. I give them right. so much. But yeah, right. so once I started doing that, they were like, run with it. Go. I love it. And that's really cool because I'm, I'm kind of like that. I always say cool bosses, you know, are more successful because if you have happy employees, if you have employees, my guys like side work, side work's a big touchy subject. I'm not going to get too far into it, but if it's your friend, family, and it's not my client, why wouldn't I support you as long as it's legal and you don't want, you got insurance issues and stuff like that. Look, if you want to take the chance, I encourage my guys to, to do whatever they can to better themselves. And some of that side jobs, and that would be starting a YouTube channel or being creative and something like that. So now you're, you're, you're working, you're kicking ass for many years, I'm sure. And then how did social media come about? And how many years have you been on social media? Tell me about that journey. Obviously, it didn't happen overnight. You did your apprenticeship. You know, are you a master? Are you a journeyman? What's your what's your credentials there too, I should ask so everybody knows. So I'm a journeyman. How it works in New York State is a little bit different than every other state. So you're a journeyman until you take a licensing exam, which mm -hmm. in, in that case, then you're a master's, but the licensing exam requires insurances. So technically, I'm allowed to take my licensing exam. I've hit mm -hmm. the number of years, which is like seven or eight years. You're allowed to take it. Um, mm -hmm. I just haven't because I'm not at that stage in my life yet where I'm ready to take that on. 100%. I don't blame you. So when I came to Montana, I'm a journeyman in California, but we don't have a master's in California. And then I got a C10 license, which is an unlimited electrical contractor license. So we can build skyscrapers and we do work on skyscrapers, actually. So when I came to Montana, they're like, no, you don't even qualify. You you know, you're not a master, you're a journeyman. And, and you know, to me, tomato, tomato, I'm not trying to insult anybody out there that has their master's. I do have my master's in Montana. You know, I, I always say that things on paper are important, especially to be legal and stuff. But really, it's your experience. It's your common sense. It's what you've actually done on the field. Because I've had people come in and ask for jobs with journeyman cards. And I'm like, I've been an apprentice for two years that knows more than you because they know how to pass a test and they have the hours. So the funny part is the same thing here. When I came to Montana, they're like, no, we can't give you your master's and da da da. And I'm like, I'm 52 years old. Like, I'm not going back to school and da 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 da. Anyway, there was this great program here. They, you know, to put a long story short, because they need people, but I ended up getting my master's. And then I, and with a master's, same thing. You got to get licensed. You got insurance so that you can get an unlimited contractor's license here. So I hear you 100%. I think a lot of people that I coach, many people, I don't know if you know, but I coach like 400 people now across the country. And I always tell them, be where you are in your stage in life. Uh, you know, funny part is about you and I talked about it is like, you know, you need to work to have content too, right? So same with me. It's like, okay, I could kind of step away from everything, but I can't be an electrical channel if I don't have that content. So I think for you, just the diverse work that you do for that company is pretty amazing. And again, they've worked hard, whatever that company is to get to that point. I just love the fact that you saw an opportunity. And that's what I want to talk about is you saw an opportunity, how you got all this diverse work. We winter, summer, which is great. New York, rural, suburban. It's almost like the perfect storm at the job that you got at the current position. So how did that turn into, where was that aha moment where you go, oh, I'm gonna go social? Um, so I kind of waited until I got more comfortable with electrical. I was a personal trainer. I didn't even say that before when I was talking about my careers, but I was a personal trainer at one point as I was going through my apprenticeship and I was always posting fitness content. I took editing classes in high school. I did all of that stuff in college. Also, like for extra credits, I would take 
photography classes and stuff like that. So I had like a general idea of editing and stuff. I just never brought it into electrical until I felt comfortable enough that I was doing the work that I was comfortable with and I was happy with work that I would post on social media and I knew enough about it to like promote it kind of. Um, and then after I started that, I started taking all the crazy jobs that nobody wanted to do in our company. I was like, oh, three phase Delta system in a shitty ass sewer spot. I'm in it. Let me do it. I'll do that. So the diversity kind of let me do all that with the position that I was in in my company, but nobody wanted to do those jobs anyway. So they were like, go ahead, Boxy, go do whatever the fuck you want to do. That is awesome. I love it. It's funny you said that because again, it just fit. See, I saw that from the outside being kind of a business owner and being a creator. I was like, wow, she's in that perfect storm. So then you start doing those jobs. And again, that's what's because you were like, I'm going to start putting this out there on social. I like those jobs. In my company, we are residential, commercial, and industrial. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the journeyman that you get put with is like, we all are in our own little niches. So like we have like a specialist that does residential, a specialist for commercial, and a specialist for industrial. So it was kind of like I was put more around residential initially, mm -hmm. um, but I started veering off when I was apprenticing into commercial because I like doing that stuff. Even when I was like younger, I was like not like any of the girls in my family. I was like never in the house. I was out with the boys you know, cutting wood, mm. doing stuff like that. So I always wanted to do the big shit. I don't like little wires. So once I got the opportunity mm -hmm. to do commercial work, I jumped mm -hmm. on it immediately. Cool. That is totally awesome. But I like created that diversity for myself. Like right. I like pick and choose now what jobs I go to. Yeah. I know you looked outside. If you're listening over here, we had to get no. Lexi's son busy. So is he is he on the lawnmower or is he on the, uh, the, the little Bronco you said? <laughs> yeah, we bought him a little Bronco from Target. It was $400 and he's driving it around. Right I love now. it. It. Very cool. So you got that diversity for yourself. And then when did you notice that the social media thing is really taking off? And what was that experience? Like you started and you said you did the fitness thing, which makes a lot of sense because we do see the videos where you're, you know, you got 500 pounds in your, on your pinky where I can't even lift probably, you know, barely my cell phone. That's how out of shape I am. But when did you realize that, wow, this social media thing, like, whoa, people are, are watching and they're, it's starting to grow. How did that come about? What was like that first? I remember for me, like as a creator, you know, we're like, oh my gosh, two likes wow four likes like oh my gosh somebody dm me do you remember like what was some of that the first dms and the and the craziness where you went wow this is going to be big so i was randomly posting on tiktok i didn't even have tiktok at the time and then i started posting on tiktok and i posted a bunch of videos and nothing really like caught or anything but my viral video that is like almost traumatizing for me is that I posted a video of me doing an outside service with SEU, which is like a huge controversy in the electrical field, but I didn't know it at the time because I'm from New York and we use SEU outside in New York. That's like sure. a normal thing. So <laughs> I posted a video. It was such a dumb video. I didn't even edit it hard and I blew up from that video for sure. And it was a huge controversy and that's kind of what sparked it. And it was either that looks like shit. Why would you do that? That's not code compliant. <laughs> or it was that looks great. That's normal in New York state and other parts of the country. But a lot of it was criticizing. So that's kind of how that happened. For hey, <laughs> uh, you, you know, YouTube algorithm likes the bad and the good. If people can give me a million dislikes. That actually boosts your video. It's, uh, it's kind of funny how that works. Really? So you doing a job and i know you probably never even thought for two seconds what videos go viral like i know you've shot videos that went this is gonna hit hard like people are gonna be and they're like dude what the heck oh, yeah. well for me see in me i'm lucky anything that goes over a thousand views in the first couple of days that's like viral for me you know that because i'm a super niche but i can just imagine that you're looking and going oh my gosh there's seven hundred thousand dollars seven hundred thousand people looking at this post how long ago was that when did you when did you start that and when was that viral video it was probably a little bit over a year ago now I've Great. probably been on social media for a little bit over a year. It's amazing. It's amazing, but it's obvious. I mean, when you look at your channel and what you do, I mean, it's a no brainer. I'm going to say it that way, because again, you're more pleasant to look at. I don't think you have a problem with that. And that's what I was going to ask you. What, what upsets you? Like I'm a married man. Obviously you've got a unique look where you go, there isn't 800 people that look like Lexi or even women in this trade. Was it difficult for you? Third generation? It's probably not because you got the socking just like everybody else. And you got made fun of, I'm sure by your family, you get the same thing, everything, but what upsets you or what 
kind of pisses you off? Is there a stereotype? Do you get a lot of that? Because I'm a total real guy. Like I said, we live in the real world. So let's be real. Let's sit crooked and talk straight. You know, why not? You're a kick ass third generation, the real deal. You have a right to do whatever you want. This is your life. This is your business. This is who God made you. So why not, you know, lift yourself up, your family up? I mean, obviously I talk too much. I'm not the best looking guy, but God gave me a gift to help other people. Maybe, you know, maybe not to shut up or blah, blah, blah. So I can either say, no, I don't like that because people criticize me all the time. Like I'm a salesman. Hell yeah. I'm trying to sell you something. I'm trying to sell you a better life. I'm trying to sell you what I learned from my mistakes. So the thing that bothers me probably, it's probably like two things, but the biggest thing for me is thinking that there is a man behind me telling me what to do or somebody saying that I'm just doing this for the video. Mm -hmm. Like this is my full-time job and I worked pretty hard to get here for there to be a man standing behind me telling me what to do or even doing the work and then me jumping in the frame later. That is so fucking annoying. And it's just because I'm decent looking in the trade. That's why. That's literally Wow. That 100% totally is insulting. But I'm going to I'm going to tell you the truth. Remember, I was just as guilty in the sense that and I didn't see it like that like I know you're doing the work there's no way you can fake that but what I thought is when I saw your brother I thought maybe that was like is that your journeyman and I'm like it's because I want to say this truthfully it's because yes we're ignorant we're men we're all ignorant right but this the truth is um because we're not used to that that's the only reason I said it like because but you're right see that's the cool part and that's why when I talked to I just told you I, I had this girl named Ryan Ryan big shout out to you and she's working at Home Depot and I see her and I see the potential. I see, I mean, she can kick my butt. I know this girl could be a great electrician. And I want you see, I'm just trying, I'm trying to change that as well because I've hired women in the past and my women, sorry guys, sorry, Rudy, if you listen to it, they, they bring a whole different level of awesomeness, especially to a business owner. You know, I don't like the quota crap. Okay. I will not put a woman in my business because I got to meet a quota. There's no such thing. I won't put ethnicity. I'm Armenian. You got to be qualified for the job, plain and simple. You know, I always say if my building is burning, I'm not a lightweight guy. I'm 215 pounds. And the quota is that they had to put five foot men into the fire department. Look, I'm sorry, dude. I want like six foot 10, some big dude to come up because that five foot dude is not getting me out of the building, you know? So that's <laughs> my feeling politically incorrect or not. I just think that there's the right people for the right job. But the problem is our brains are still not there, even though our hearts and our minds are. And so, look, I was just as guilty when I saw your brother. I'm like, I, I thought actually he you worked for him because I knew you didn't have your own business yet, which I told you something about being a brand. So you do have your own business. We know that. But uh, see, I'm so I'm guilty of it. And I apologize. And, and I think people need to apologize and need to know where they're wrong. And I love that you're on the podcast. And that's one of the conversations we had early on. And that shows people the real Lexi. She could have easily being like screw you you said that but no she's like there's always stereotypes that we need to break over and just you having here is part of that so what leads us right into the main question uh what would you tell someone like ryan women that are like oh man i love the trades i want to get into the trades look you know and i know it's good money it's good work you're never gonna go hungry you're never going to where were you on vacation you were fixing that box puerto rico <laughs> puerto you're in puerto rico you got a job on vacation like that's what i tell everybody when i'm people say should i get in the trade it's a universal language in all of north america we're 122 40 baby we speak the same language it's you can leave states and yeah you might have to do a little bit of this and that but you're now certified you know so i think it's an amazing career what would you say to the women out there specifically i want to play this podcast i'm going to go speak at the local high schools here have a trades program in high school i miss that when i grew up we had shop we had all this they don't have that in los angeles 90 percent of the places i'm going to go and i'm going to talk to these women there and i'm going to say whatever i can say is not going to be half as good as what you could tell them. What advice do you have? I mean, I know it's not a magic thing we're looking for, but what is it? What's some advice that you have? If you want to be a girl in a trade, you need to have grit. You need to not care what anybody thinks of you. You need to not care about literally anything. You go to your job and you do the best work that you can and you get the most experience that you can and you just fucking work and you have to outwork these men and you have to pick the shitty parts of the job and you have to pick basically up everybody's slack because you're already in a stereotype, which is not a really a bad thing because if you're good at what you do, they will drop the stereotype almost immediately. Everybody that has had a stereotype about me, if they see me on the job, they have nothing bad to say afterwards because I work my fucking ass off. So if you're a girl in the trade, you need to work your ass off. But it does come with a lot of perks and it is worth it, thousand million percent. I literally wouldn't change life for anything, but 
you just have to be a worker because we've had girls on the job sites that weren't meant to be on the job site. You, you're going to know if you're meant for the trade or not. You, you're going to just know off jump. And there's been girls that will sit in the excavator with their Timberland <laughs> boots on and hide from the bugs that are eating us alive. <laughs> oh my pitch, gosh. And they just don't make it. It's just yeah. how it, you just need to know what you're getting yourself into in the trades. But if you come prepared, and you don't give a shit about what anybody says about you, you will do great. I love it. I could have never even said it half as good, honestly. But but it's true. It's true. And even the women that I hired, and I'm going to be honest with you, and I and I had to sat, sat down and I said, look, are you ready for this? Like, you know, you you do have to be prepared. You can't come into it not at least uh, understanding exactly what you said. I, and I 100% agree with you. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about social media. So uh, first and foremost, if you're watching this on the podcast, on the YouTube channel, again, you can watch it at the 360 Electrician on YouTube. Uh, Lexi, you just recent, I don't say it's recent, you've you've posted on YouTube a while ago, but YouTube was not your main uh, posting, right? It was TikTok, yes? Yeah, TikTok and Instagram because it's like vertical. YouTube Easy, is cheesy. horizontal, it's a whole nother game. <laughs> right, you're like, mm, I gotta get used to this. So first and foremost, I'm gonna encourage you right now. So here's the, I never told you this, but you know, you almost made my week, you did make my week about three weeks ago. Do you want me to tell you why? Not because yeah. you agreed to come to this podcast, obviously. Obviously, I love that you did, but I, you made my week. Should I tell you yeah. why? Yeah. I had more subscribers than you on YouTube for three days. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, we have more. It, I'm not joking. It, we were like, and we were barely getting to 15 and you were like at 13, nine. And then I went, of course, I went, she just must have got on TikTok. And it was, you were there like only a week ago. Well, you know, you're easily uh, going to get to the several hundred thousand. And I love your long form video. If you're listening to this podcast right now, it's on the screen. It's youtube.com at Lex the electrician you go there you sign up because lexi's gonna move a lot of her stuff her long form to youtube so you gotta be there you're gonna see a lot more than you're gonna see for that 30 second or one minute reels uh and i love it i love it the content you're putting out is real don't change it i think it's super it's a super winner for you absolutely now i'm gonna put up there also of course you are on instagram several hundred thousand on instagram and that's instagram.com lex the electrician as well and then of course her almost nine hundred thousand plus followers we're almost getting there right uh yeah. and we'll talk about those goals there uh it's tiktok.com uh, forward slash at lexi underscore a brew did i say that right a brew almost a brew okay almost <laughs> Of us. I told her she better forgive me a hundred times before we got on the podcast. It's fine. <laughs> I get it all the time. Right, right. And, and, okay. So let's talk about a couple of things. Now, you guys are probably wondering, how does the smallest, I always like to call myself small because, you know, you lift yourself up. I'm the guy, it's the biblical thing. I sit at the end of the table and if the host wants to bring me to the front, great. If not, I'm totally fine in the back. So let's, again, one of those sit crooked and talk straight things. Uh, I've been blessed in a lot of ways in my own business and I, I, did this series on the trade and I did talk to Samantha. She is the content coordinator, which is a big fan of Lexi as well, who isn't. And uh, we were talking Lexi and, we, and the first conversation was, hey, Samantha, you know, a lot of these women that are creators and in the trade and stuff, they're not really going to respond to me. First of all, you know, it's just another guy that's trying to be like, you're awesome. I want to, you know, see, can we connect? Let me get on it. Blah, blah, blah. And so we came up with a short list. And of course you were on the short list. And she said, but I don't know Lexi. And I said, well, I don't know Lexi. And so I reached out several times on social media and stuff like you would normally normally do. And so by the way, I'm going to break because my ADD is kicking in. Listen, if you're listening to this, if you are subscribed to Lexi, you're a huge fan. You're a fan of the 360 electrician or any other creator. Listen, we love you. I think Lexi's going to agree that it's you guys. You're really the reason we do what we do. I am a little narcissistic. Okay. I get it. But no, I really do it. I don't make the money compared to the effort to give you guys content. I don't do that to rub my shoulder or, or pat myself. And I know Lexi doesn't too. It's hard work. The girl's working all day long. I'm working. She's got a family. I've got a family. Like you got to give us a little break. We would respond if we could. We just can't all the time. So again, I know that. So I didn't expect Lexi to, 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 to you know, reach out like, Ooh, I'm going to be on the podcast for the electrical contractor channel. Why would I do that? Right. But anyway, I, I always say let's win hearts before we win minds. And so I had to reach out to Lexi through Klein tools. So I want to talk a little bit about that. It just so happens that Klein tools is not an official sponsor of mine. I do know that you're a brand in ambassador for Klein. Who wouldn't want to be? It's not that I don't want Klein to sponsor me. Greg's listening to this and going, oh, great. What's Jeff going to do now? <laughs> I like to do things a little bit differently because I'm a little bit different position where I can, I, not that I don't want to pick and choose, but um, I can say no to people right now because I have two bricks and mortars and blah, blah, blah. But I did tell Klein, like, I'm all in on Klein. It's the very first tool, Lexi, when I got into trade school. This is how old I am. Get ready. I would tell maybe 52. In 1992, I graduated Los Angeles Trade Technical College with a 
two-year degree in electrical construction and maintenance, which is like your AS degree. You do school and then you do a trade. My very first tools were my Klein tools, my blue handled linemans, my yellow needle nose, and my red handled side cutters. And I still have the, the leather pouch. I have all of them. I'm going to put it on the channel to show everybody. I still have my original tools. So can you imagine you're in trade school or even when you started, Lexi, in your family, right? Yeah, Lexi. Uh, hey, guys. Pfft. Hey, sorry, suckers. I'm getting sponsored by Klein, Milwaukee. You know, what would they say to you? They'd be like, girl, like, what are you smoking? Like, share some of that. But it was kind of a a crazy surreal moment for me. And my brother went to trade school with me, by the way. And you work with your brother. How crazy is that, right? Yep. <laughs> and so when I called John, my brother up, and, and I'm going to be visiting Klein's Dallas facility. Again, this podcast is not about me. I'm just getting to the point, right? Uh, and and I was just like, wow, like Klein Tools wants to like work with me. It's crazy stuff. So I that's how me and Lexi uh, met. Klein Tools is going to be at Nika. And uh, they had told me that they were going to have a surprise guest because I think they were in the works worth working out your deal. And your deal is a lot harder to work out because yours, you know, includes a lot of stuff. Where me, I'm like, please, can you have me at the booth? Like, I'd come for free, <laughs> jokingly. But yeah, they, they reached out to me and they said, hey, listen, we would like you. You'd be like a great compliment to this really special guest that we have coming. Because again, we're totally opposites, but we're, yet we speak the same language. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm wondering who who this is and and I won't get into his name but you know who was there last year and a couple of people and I'm like I know it's not that person and so of course me and Samantha are talking about how are we going to get a hold of you Lexi how are we going to get you on the podcast how are we going to get you in? and in the meanwhile Klein Tools has you locked up you know you're going to so it just kind of worked out where I'm like oh well can you do a little e-greet with us and so that's how this all came about you guys Klein Tools a mutual sponsor uh played liaison and you know what? Again, Lexi, I got to say it. You were super gracious, super humble to say like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And it was, you know, again, knowing that what you got going on, I really do appreciate you coming on. So can we talk a little bit about Klein Tools and what we're going to do? And the main reason I want to do it is because we want to give away all their stuff at the show, right? We That's the good part we get to do. And again, Greg's going to go crazy because we're going to like totally promise everybody everything. So tell me about that. You're invited to the show. Do you know what you're doing there? Have they gone over the details with you as far as what days you're going to be there? I kind of know what, what, what I'm doing. I know we'll mix a couple of things together there. But uh, where is everybody going to see you? Because that's kind of the first big event I think you're, you're You've been invited to where people you're going to have all your fans lined up so i will bring some extra bodyguards for you i think you should do the same <laughs> what what are you doing for klein where can they see you and then you and i right now off the cuff are going to give away klein stuff for sure um so i'm going to be at the klein booth saturday and sunday i don't know all the times yet at this point but i will be there and i will be on klein live with them i am filming some video content right now for mod box and just a couple other stuff that they want me to go over and stuff like that. So it'll be nice. Uh, it'll be awesome. Is that, is that really the only place that you've been in a convention where your fans are going to be like totally interacting with you? Have you been to any other big shows? Has anybody else invite? So that's going to be pretty crazy, Lexi. Yeah. Like you're, you're over a million altogether. Like, what are you going to do when like 700 <laughs> electricians, guys and girls start bum rushing Clyde? Are you bringing some bodyguards? Gonna, have you, have you thought throw, this through? I'm going to throw free shit out. <laughs> right. Throw shit, right. Right. Like all us electricians, you know, free, free Klein screwdriver. Like forget Lexi. I'm like after yeah, forget that. Forget Lexi. I need those Carolinas. <laughs> I know exactly. Well, okay. So that's awesome. I I know that we're gonna do Klein live. I don't know if we're gonna do anything together there, but obviously we'll we'll goof off and we'll do some stuff and and just laugh. I know that Samantha and Nika's dying to meet you. We're gonna walk around with her. I'm going to talk to a lot of people there. Obviously, it's a great interaction times you know Klein doesn't have us locked up 24 7 they do they do put us in a cage at night so that we don't run away but i'm just kidding uh i i believe that we've we've got some after parties to go it's gonna be cool just hanging out with everybody and seeing other creators which i'm i'm bringing in a bunch of creators that i talk to that are dying to meet you as well so if you are going to nika 2023 if you weren't going to nika now you have a reason to go because you're going to get to meet lexi uh lexi i'm not going to spoil anything but there might be some limited edition maybe some special stuff maybe some stuff that only i know if you pay me a check of five thousand dollars right now i'll tell you lexi, lexi secrets i'm just kidding right I, five thousand i'm gonna split it with you i'm just trying to get it no no, no okay fifty thousand fifty thousand right. a good starting point okay. uh we're gonna have some fun stuff we're gonna give away a bunch of klein tools uh i buy my own klein and yes i put that out yesterday on a live meet klein does send me stuff all the time i bought the klein gloves at home depot i gotta show you guys something if you're watching on the uh youtube channel lexi check this out up to 350 casey mill made in america klein tools cutter cable cutter home depot 
bad choice, Home Depot. You're dissing electricians by dropping Klein. I'm not happy, but I am happy that you had this $99 wire cutter for $24.95. Yep, I bought it. So if you do watch the channel, don't think that me and Lexi are just showered by all these people. We do buy our own tools as well. But yeah. if you're a sponsor right now and you're listening, we don't mind being showered as well either. Okay. So are you excited about Klein? I mean, about Nika? And that, by the way, let me tell everybody, it's uh, October 1st and 2nd, I believe. That's the Saturday and Sunday. I might have got that wrong, but you can take it out look at it. Actually, let me put it up on the YouTube channel. Go to www.nikaconvention.org and get your tickets. 100%, you will see Lexi hanging out at the Klein Tool booth Saturday and Sunday. Not all day, but you'll see her there. Uh, you'll get to see me. And the only reason you want to see me is to ask, when is Lexi coming back? I'm totally fine with that. All right, moving on. I got a couple more questions for you. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. Lexi. The first time we had a conversation, I said, Lexi, I don't see you as an electrician anymore. Of course you are. But what I meant was I see you as a brand. And that really is the next level of content creator and, and success. You're blessed. I know you're blessed. I know you don't take it for granted like I do. Every day we're just like, wow, where do you see the content creation go? Because there's a point, and I joked about it, is when you really only are doing the work because you need the content. It's not necessarily true because I'm still running my business and that's what I do. I'm not on the field anymore. Unfortunately, you don't want to see my pipe bending, but I <laughs> love what I do. So I'll never quit. You know, as long as I can run a company and put content out, it just, it's a blessing to do that. Do you, you said you love what you do. You wanted to do those hard stuff. You do. Do you see yourself? Do you see yourself right now? Just cruising. This is what you're doing. This is where you're at. This, this is your spot. Or do you have any ideas that you can share that you want to share? You don't have to of what you think is coming next. Where do you see yourself? Because again, I think you're a brand and you can't just ignore that and put it on the side. You really got to, you, you know, you've got to move forward with that. Yeah. So, um, the YouTube is definitely up and coming. I hope to have a lot of stuff for that. Um, as I grow, I'll definitely have some bigger options for all of that. I just am working right now. I don't want to give away too much. I do have some really cool things, especially for females in construction um, in general and blue collar females. I want to do more as far as some of the issues that we deal with. I don't want to give too much away right now. Yeah, because don't, I, you don't have to I have a lot of people. Well, I don't mind sharing, but I have a lot of people that like to jump on the bandwagon behind me very quickly. So I just. Sure. There's a lot of things that I want to do for women in the trades, and um, I just am basically just starting starting the gears, getting it yeah. going. But... You're dipping you're dipping feet in those waters. Yeah, for a lack of better. Yeah, and you're the perfect person to do it. And I think that is amazing. That's honorable because yeah, you're you're a brand. I mean, think about that. It's crazy to think that like two years from now, when you know, it's already hard to get a hold of you, but I can't imagine two years from now, I'm gonna be like, Yeah, I had her on the podcast one day, but I know we're gonna be lifelong friends. That's totally one hundred percent. Yeah, my yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't tell people that. Now they're going to pay me even more money. Now I'm going to be rich. I don't even need to do YouTube. If you sell my phone number, <laughs> Jeff. Okay, how about this? If you don't subscribe, no, I'm just kidding. If you don't show up and say hi, then no, I, that won't work either. I, I promise you I won't. Um, and uh, the only, you know, having my phone number is worthless. So I guess I have nothing to worry about. I guess it's a one way. But yeah, I appreciate that. But you put that out there and I didn't. So I'm super excited about that. And you're absolutely right. You know, you, you're you put in a brand position. Uh, you're in a position where you're a brand. And I, and I really love that you're already thinking about that. Uh, I think even in my form. So I, the only reason I am something in this point is because I picked a niche that nobody had, you know, if you, but the amount of people I'm helping. So when you, when you say stuff for women, I can already imagine how much that's going to help, whether it's a comfortable fitting pair of pants, whether it's a tool belt that nobody's really thinking about, you have so much star power there that I think you're the perfect person. I feel the same way. I, I can't tell you when I'm in coaching. So I have over 250 recorded sessions and it just, every time I watch them and I just see the person behind there going, oh my gosh, like nobody would ever tell me that. Like I would have never got that information from my comp. There's nowhere for people to go. I feel that exactly what you said when you're, when you're thinking for women, that's that thing where women are like, like, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to roll him up or try to make him comfortable or shove something in the sleeve. I think that's very cool. And you know what? I can't wait to see where that's going to go. And I'm sure you're working on something great, but we'll, we'll bully. You know how I there's, bully milk. 
there's men stuff coming too. They'll just be on the bandwagon because you're already sure. got We're just coming yeah. along for the ride. Yeah. I want to exactly. talk about uh, that shirt you're wearing there. Uh, Dirty Hands, big sponsor of yours. I know my good friend Steven over at Mad Electrician. I talked to him and I said, yeah, Lexi sponsored. And same thing. He goes, yeah, I'm just a little sponsor. Lexi's the big <laughs> one. But we'll talk about that because you did do a photo shoot, a photo shoot for them. Um, and I, I want to, I also wanted to talk just a little bit about, uh, the haters and the stuff that we get, because we didn't talk about that. I want to get that out of the way, because if you're going to come and see Lexi and you're going to meet her, I've hoped you've listened to the podcast. You're going to get to know her more. Don't, you know, don't waste anybody's time. Don't think that we just are sitting here with nothing to do. We got lots of stuff to do. And I just want to address that. Not in a, I don't want to put it in a way like, you know, we're anything different. We're real people. We just happen to get ourselves in front of a camera, and thanks to you guys again, the subscribers, you've you've got you've put a stage for us. So we really appreciate you. But let's talk a little about Dirty Hands, one of your big sponsors. You've done a lot of work for them. How was it doing the photo shoot? Was that a cool experience? I love I love Troll Co. So I am very brand loyal. <clears throat> it's with Klein too. That's why I'm so big on Klein. My first tools were Klein. I never heard of any other tool company. <laughs> um, every family member of mine is like, this is my Klein hat with the camo on it. I've never known anything different. And when I started, that's just what my thing. So with uh, Troll Co, they, I was posting them a little bit. My boyfriend's actually an iron worker in nice. the city. So he's, he will take credit to the day he dies for putting <laughs> on Troll Co's We'll, get, we'll give him credit. Yeah, giving him credit. He total did credit. It. We're giving him total credit. Listen, he came to the photo shoot and got free stuff. I don't even want to hear it from what? him. What? Yep. And he gets the yeah. description. <laughs> I take care of that man for doing I it. I love but, it. I love it. But um, so he was the one who kind of got me into it. I was buying him gifts before I was like big into it. I was still wearing my company uniform and stuff like that. But um, I started posting them and I reached out. To, I reached out to them when I was mm. smaller and, you know, it was like, I like wearing your guys' stuff. Would you guys be willing to like have me as an ambassador? That's they awesome. took me right in. They are such a family for me, and I literally Very love cool. that. The Very photo cool. shoot was literally uh, the coolest thing I've ever done. I've never even done anything like that. But they've Very also cool. introduced me to a lot of different people and a lot of different people in the trades. I've never even met a female in the trades. Uh -huh. Never even. I've never even seen. Don't, I've only <laughs> seen like one female in the trade, and like I said, she was sitting in an excavator. Like. Right. I've never seen like so I got to meet a lot of cool people and I love that brand. So I will I will wear this brand till I die. Same thing with Very the cool. line for the haters yep. that come to the Klein booth. If you want to be a hater, just know I'm really good at throwing those fucking linemans. I'm really I love good. it. I love it. <laughs> As I said, I'm sure if Klein hasn't gotten the bodyguards, they better. So tell me a little bit about the haters. I think that is that's probably the there's only a couple of downfalls to being a creator. I think that everybody should create something for their business, for their own selves. I heard uh, Think Media is a great guy, Sean Cannell, that I follow. And he said, you know, if at the least my kids have like this whole video record of who their dad was. And I thought that was so cool. It like your cool. son has got this video record of what did mom do? Let me show you what mom did, which is phenomenal. But I think there's a couple of downfalls. Agree or disagree. I want you to think for me, the only the big downfall is it takes a lot of time. The, I think that other people that are watching that are criticizing and just being trolls, like have no freaking idea. Dustin says it best, you know, cause he said he, he doesn't give a crap. He had a video about haters. I love it. I just should just replay that. But how is it with haters with you? Because now we've got the female element and let's be honest that that takes away. First of all, your boyfriend probably knows the deal. I, I've seen his pictures. Guy's got no problem. You don't have to worry about anything. He's a great looking guy. Like, you know, you're good. I, I, I could see if you were with someone, you know, a little bit more insecure. The, he's cool. But how does that work with the comments? I'm sure you get a bunch of people saying, marry me. Do you have a boyfriend? Blah, 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 every, every, blah, blah. Then you have the haters that are going to say your code sucks or you, this sucks. You're going to have the, how do you deal with it? I know, I know you do a great job of ignoring it. And that goes part of, I understood how you don't, you can't reach out to everybody because everybody is. But what do you, what would you say are the downfalls? For me, it's takes time away from family. I don't really have haters because of, of what I do, but I, what is it for you? What are the two or three things that you love and a couple of so, things you hate about social media? So it takes time for sure. It takes hours and hours. Um, setting up my camera at work isn't anything really crazy. People think that that's such a crazy thing. It's not that crazy. Um, it's the hours that I have to spend home doing yeah. all this editing, watching myself work eight hours and try to pick out the good parts and figure out what is needed and what's not. But 
The haters don't bother me. My dad taught me when I was little to not give a shit what anybody says. And mm -hmm. if they're talking shit, they're probably not going anywhere in life. So I personally have had that mindset. It does bother me when people bring out codes and telling me what I do wrong. And, you know, and they're in a different state and they don't understand the, right. the, the variety. So I don't want people in to see my comments. The, the biggest thing for me is what people are seeing other people saying, not because of me, but discouraging other people. So yeah. I can't stand people that are haters and I put them on blast all the time on TikTok because not because I care, because I could give two shits, but people looking at that, wanting to start social media and wanting to better themselves, seeing that they're less likely to do anything with social media because of all the hate. And they're, you're stopping somebody from bettering their life because you don't care enough to do it or you're not motivated enough to put in the extra work to make the extra money to do to do better for yourself and your family like i can't stand that shit that is yeah. the thing that bothers me the most and it like i said doesn't bother me at all you can talk so much shit i work in trades people talk you. shit behind my back <laughs> yeah. i could really give two shits right it's what other people are interpreting as and putting it like they're like you know i can't start a page i can't deal with all that it doesn't fucking matter nobody fucking matters so I do put them on blast from time to time, but I do try to respond to as many comments as I can because right. like you said, they're the reason that we're here. Like you're the reason I'm recording. You want to see something? I'm going to show you. You're asking for recommendations. I'm going to show you. But for the haters, people are like, don't, don't feed it. Don't feed into it. I'm not feeding. I just want people to know that they should do whatever they want to do and not mm -hmm. care about anybody else. Doesn't yeah. matter. And as far as like the married thing, I actually don't even look at those. I could really care less. If you Which ones, oh, the, if you would you marry me, kind of thing. Yeah, would you marry 700, me? Be, listen, be my hold on. Send me the ring first, one way with one way postage, and I'll think about it. And just you but know, you don't even, but you don't even know me. I'm fucking crazy. I, I you think you. You don't want to. She's Puerto marry Rican, me. people. She's half Puerto Rican. Yeah, you come think on. You and and you hear me. that? You hear that New York accent coming out every so often. <laughs> we're gonna have your boyfriend on next time and we're gonna say who is the real lexi i'm just kidding uh, he thinks i'm he knows i'm crazy you, know. <laughs> you gotta friends. be a little bit you gotta be a little bit crazy what you do and there's nothing wrong with that like i said i think you and i when we hit it off samantha and i hit it off you know we we have this little crazy for sure yeah, like exactly. you know samantha again she's in that corporate world and you see her and if you see her pictures you go oh what a no, no 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 like don't mess with her there's a reason lexi made it to where she is people there's a reason samantha waited it where she is you can't be not a little bit crazy i love it um i was going to ask you a couple of things uh not that i want to close this thing off obviously uh we can go on for hours but we both have <laughs> families my question to you is you work with some phenomenal brands yes. uh, obviously um who are some brands this could be a shout out. You and me are going to bully them. And I want to talk about two seconds about my bullying. Did you see my Milwaukee pack out video? Yes. What'd you think? I liked it. Okay. So it listen, I love Milwaukee. So Milwaukee, if you're listening, hold on a second. Like all my power tools are Milwaukee. Okay. Mine but, too. Yeah. Listen, but you know, <laughs> I used to back my whole back when I first started with Milwaukee and Milwaukee. Listen, I didn't expect a phone call. And I know you're the same way. You're, you're kind of like, hmm, I wonder why they haven't called. I'm sure they're all calling you now, but you worked your butt off so they yeah they should be calling but now you should have called me when i was looking then because now it's going to take a little bit more but honestly i i still like my m18 and everything's m18 you know m12 and all that good stuff in fact i got some videos on that but i'm in a position where i can bully companies in the sense of i don't make my money off sponsors i don't make my money off uh, brand sponsorships or anything like that but i do work with some awesome brands ranger designs one of them i'm going to introduce you to a lot of people because i know that you're going to you know this is a collaboration you know i love to collaborate that's my thing i'm the business channel the electrical contractor channel who are some brands that you either, you don't have to tell me if they're working with, but who are some brands, like we said, Klein was like, wow. Milwaukee is wow, that's a big deal. You know, you're talking, I probably right there, the two biggest brands. I don't wanna knock any other brands that maybe you work with or or maybe you're looking at me. Like I talked to Ideal, I've talked to everybody. I've there's a lot of people I haven't talked to. Is there a brand that you go, wow, that would be really cool to work with? Um, that maybe you're not working or maybe you haven't even reached out. I don't have a specific brand necessarily. Um, I have a lot of the brands have reached out to me um, in different ways. And I will say that I am brand loyal regardless. So like Milwaukee, for example, everything in my freaking van is Milwaukee, literally everything. It's one of those things that same thing with Klein. 
how I started with Klein, that was my first impact driver, was a Milwaukee impact driver. So like, and I love the tool, obviously, but I'm like the type of person that needs to feel like everybody's contributing where it's needed love it. to, yep. to stay. So for mm -hmm. example, client tools goes out of their way for me. Mm -hmm. We have a mutual thing. We both understand and they love me. I love them. And that's how it works. We better each other. Right. Same thing with Trollco. Again, I have a whole family now of people that I've never, ever had before. Yeah. You can pick up the phone and actually talk to somebody there. I yes. love that. That's what yes. I love about clients. huge. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I love Milwaukee tools and they have sent me like a lot of stuff. I have nothing bad to say about their tools, mm -hmm. but if you are a brand and you're seeing that these influencers are making you money and you are not like everybody buys packouts, of course, everybody's promoting right. packouts, but you should really invest your time into those people because those are the people that are selling it for you. I hundred thousand percent agree. And this is something we didn't even talk about off screen loyalty, no. loyalty to me it means more than money. Well, my motto is time is worth more than money. You're going to hear that from me a lot because it's true. Time, time we're limited. Money can come and go. But I love it. I love what you said right there because, again, I work with companies. So people are like, oh, it's easy when you're sponsored by Klein to throw away your mod box. Klein has paid me not one penny. I humbly, uh, ref not refuse. That's not the right word. I humbly declined to do their ambassador program. I have my reasons. Not that I'm not going to, I'm not stupid. Like it's Klein tools, but I wanted to do it because I said, Klein, I don't need your free tools. I don't need your money. What I need is authenticity and I need loyalty. If I'm going to go all in on you, I need you to be all in on me. I think we talked offline just before, but I have a couple of brands that have been, listen, one of the best brands, sorry, Lexi, I'm going to do it for me. And I want you like <laughs> troll Ranger design is the Mercedes Benz of racking for vans, cargo vans. They're the Mercedes Benz. Benz. This company, when I was nothing, gave me everything to start out and said, we back you because we believe in you. It was even to the point where like the first year, it was kind of like, hush, hush, what the heck are we doing? And after that, they're all in on and 360 electric. That means more to me than anything in the world. And if they said, Jeff, I'm sorry, man, our budget got cut to like nothing. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. You guys believe me when I was nothing and now I'm something. Uh, great story. Another company, again, Field Pulse. Uh, Southwire was one of my first sponsors. Like, wow, Southwire. No commitment, no. I'm Armenian, dude. I need the hug and then Puerto Rican too, right? You need the kiss on both cheeks. If you don't kiss me on both cheeks when we meet, like I don't get the love. I need the love and that means a lot more for me. So it's super interesting that you said that. I think there's so many brands that are gonna line up and you know what? I, as I said, my, my, in my mind, I thought, well, what's my next thing to do? I would love to be a manager for content creators and ask for nothing in return because I think that there's so much potential in our niche, in our creator niche, that's so untapped. And sorry, brands, you're paying pennies, but getting dollars in return. And I think a lot of the guys that I talk to are hardworking, just like you and me. They've got families to feed and they used to spend millions of dollars in advertising and now they're spending thousands of dollars. I'm not free cool tools. with it. They're just spending I'm free tools now. <laughs> Yes. So you you and I are going to change that, Lexi. I'm going to tell you right now. You and I are going to change that. There's a new generation, a new wave of creators coming. So brands, you better start picking up your phone now because it's going to be a lot harder for you later. That's all I got to say on my side. I'm not talking to Lexi about uh, for Lexi, but I'm talking about myself. I think the world is going to change. How long have we gone? Does this thing even count? How long are we going? I know we could talk for hours and hours. Let's do a couple of things at the show. Maybe we'll do some lives, some stuff like that. Are you going to diversify your content in, in, in any other way, by the way? I forgot to ask you that question. Um, in another, so I is do. there anybody that is people asking you to like, hey, Lexi, because I know they've asked you lots of other questions that are kind of involved, but not. Are you are you diversifying in that sense? So I've, I'm just a very diverse person in general. Um, and electrical was my way of getting onto social media, but it's not the only thing that I do or that I'm good at at all. You know, mm -hmm. Um, so I have actually videos in the works. It's funny that you're bringing up everything mm -hmm. that I'm hiding. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but so I do have videos in the works. Um, like you've seen me cooking. Yes. That's, like that's, that's a huge, thing. right? Uh, yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, and uh, wow. so cooking is a huge thing for me and a huge thing for my family. So things like that. Um, I do have, like I said, a couple things in the works. But my my brand as a whole, as a person, I'm definitely going to be diverse. Very cool. With everything. Yes. I love it. I love it. All right, Lexi, you know, I ask everybody this, but uh, nobody has lied to me yet. I don't want you to be the first one. I know you don't lie. Did you have fun on the podcast? Yeah. 
Jess, uh, I have fun every time we have a conversation. Yes, uh, we, and it's true. It's true. You, you know, when you get real people with real intentions, first and foremost, I've been in that yeah. world. I've been in the corporate world and everything. Uh, everybody out there that's listening, look, we love you guys. We thank you so much for the plot ro- platforms that you guys have given us. Know that we do care and we put it out there for you. And it, it is some of it's entertaining. And look, if I didn't have videos from Lexi and these other creators, I don't know what I would be doing when I just want to spend some time relaxing, right? That's what we're doing. We're watching these things. So I want everybody, again, I'm going to put it out here really quick as we close. Get over to Lexi. Lexi's YouTube channel, number one, it's youtube.com forward slash Lex the Electrician. She's already blown away my subscribership, so I I can't feel good anymore about having like 300 more than her. Now she's uh, blown up and I need her to blow up. Listen, I I told you this when we first met because, you know, when I introduce, I don't talk about me. I talk about, hey, Lexi, we need to get you to a million at TikTok. So if you're not on TikTok, just get on it to subscribe to Lexi. Do you know what barriers she will break? That would be insanity. I want to, I'm glad to be even be a part of it to promote you on it. I will do whatever I can, even though TikTok's not my favorite. I'll be honest, it's not my favorite social media. It's because I'm 52. You know, nobody wants to see me doing anything on TikTok, trust me. But <laughs> but Lexi's there. Let's break her on a million, but let's get her to a million on YouTube too. That's that's the goal for me. And of course, she's on Instagram. Lexi, I think we're going to have a blast at Nika. I think we're going to have a blast messing with sponsors. You have the power because you've got the audience. I only have the power because I have the niche. I think that would be amazing. I think we're going to have fun. Oh, and we're going to give away Klein tools. So um, I'm going to say... What's the secret password? They have to see both you and I together. So yep. Greg's going to give away t-shirts. Boring, Greg. Uh, Samantha's giving away some secret merch if they see me and her together. What are we going to give away? I tell you what, I will give away a $100 gift certificate to all my marketing and all my courses for sure. Only if you're only if it's me and Lexi, nobody else. Uh, but what else do you think we should give away? Some Klein tools? I've got some tools. I, uh, should we should we just bully Greg into giving away something? I don't know. Every, just the whole Everything. Warehouse. I know. It's got to be good, though. <laughs> So what's the secret word they're going to be using? What's uh, what's a phrase that you're known for? Is there anything that off the top of your head? Everybody comments that I say fire a lot. I don't fire. Okay. Yeah, like I'm like I got That's it. Fire. <laughs> I got it. How about if they come up and they see me and you at the same time and they say, Lexi, you are on fire on the 360 Electrician podcast. Yep. Good one. Yep, that's a good. They'll one. get a hundred dollar gift certificate. I'll bring at least ten of them, and then I promise you, me and Lexi are going to grab something off the shelf and we're going to give it to you, and and it's all good. So the first yep. ten people. The first 10 people, and I have something coming now mm. that I'm not going to disclose. Just know that it'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> Unless you pay me, me $50,000. It'll be limited. I only gave yes. you a little bit of information. Just <laughs> okay, all right. All right. <laughs> We better end this podcast fast or we're going to give away yeah. the farm. So yes, Lexi's okay. going to have something very, very special for you. How many people do you think in, uh, uh, if that happens? Any, 20, 10, know. 20? 20, 30, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Depends that's... on how many people are going to come up to us. There's going to be 100,000 people that are going to come and see you. Are you crazy? Listen, I know you think that I'm a huge person, but I don't feel that way in my head. I'm just this girl doing electrical work. So in uh, my head- I know. It, nevertheless, yeah. again, it's it's going to be just cool to meet you and take a picture with you. Let's be honest. Okay. I don't have a picture. Hold on. Lean to your selfie? lean to your right. Lean to your right. No, the, the, quick, somebody take a picture. I got a picture with Lexi. <laughs> Perfect. We'll take a real one. Don't All worry. right. Well, it sounds good. Look, we're ending it there. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us on the 360 Electrician Podcast. I promise I will bully Lexi again to come on. You you won't believe how much I had to give up of my 401k. I'm just kidding. But Lexi, thank you. So- She's like, wait a minute. I didn't get the transfer. Yeah, Lexi, where's- thanks again. You'll gain about five to 10 subscribers by being on my podcast. That I can promise. Anything else I can't. But I can promise that we're going to have a great time at Nika. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And everybody, listening out there don't forget to head to her youtube channel tiktok instagram and come see us at the 360 electrician on youtube until the next one you want to lead them out by saying we'll see you on the next one see you on the next one perfect thanks lexi (laughs) we'll see you soon you're welcome bye now bye